hi i'm so glad you decided to stop by for a visit my name is bridget and i live in zambia and the united states at the moment i am at my house in zambia as you can see if we've never met before i am welcoming you to this lovely place called zambia and zambia is located in southern africa and in today's video i want to talk about borehole installation water pump installation and i wanted to chat with you about installing an electric water pump as compared to a solar water pump so let's get into this video so if you're interested in finding out more about water pump installation as well as borehole drilling for your residential or maybe even farm property this is the video for you now if you haven't watched my previous video and you are interested in understanding why i'm coming up with this video i encourage you to go ahead and watch that video because recently i converted my hand pump to an electric water pump as i mentioned i am in zambia where i am still building that house back there is not complete but i've been sharing my journey especially to encourage people in the diaspora who are interested in building but sometimes you just don't know where to start and that was the case for me but since i started building i just feel like there are others who can benefit from the information that i have the information that i've acquired i've made many mistakes and i've also had some successes and challenges so on this channel in this series that is what i share so before we can even look at um, water pump installation let's talk about boreholes so there are many companies here in zambia who drill boreholes and you might want to do some research on the company you choose before you pay them any money because as with everything else uh, all these companies come with different outlooks different quality of equipment and all of that so my borehole was installed eight years ago and i did a video very recently sharing about that process as well as the process of installing my electric pump so if you haven't watched that video please um, go to the description box and i will link that video in here and i'm also going to link it up somewhere here So the cost of your borehole will depend on the level of water when the company is drilling. So the water table determines how deep they will go. And of course, the deeper they go, the more it will cost you. So you might want to do some research, maybe visit other people in your area that have boreholes and find out how deep their boreholes are that will give you a, an educated guess as to how deep you will need to go so my borehole is about 60 meters and by the way when you are drilling that borehole make sure that the company that does the drilling for you actually provides you with a report because that report will contain details like how deep your borehole was and based on that information a professional should be able to recommend how deep or the type of pump you should use in your borehole mm -hmm. 
in my case i wasn't here when my borehole was drilled and we're talking about eight years ago we never got a report so when it was time to decide on what type of pump to buy we kind of had to guess just based on the water table in my area so we ended up i ended up buying a pump that would be able to go as low as 80 meters and it wasn't necessary because i needed um, just one that could go as deep as 60 meters having said that i'm still glad that i did buy that particular pump because it's better to go a little bit more than having less to work with if you know what i mean and by the way, all this information is coming from a lay person. Always check with a professional. I'm sharing with you my personal opinion that is based on my experience. However, I know that this experience and this information will be important to you if you're trying to decide on a solar powered pump or an electric powered pump. So when I was making the decision whether to buy an electric powered or solar powered pump, the cost was one of the determining factors. And I noticed that the solar powered pumps are generally about three times more in cost compared to an electric powered pump. And this is, by the way, in Lusaka, I'm not sure what the cost is in the surrounding cities and maybe in the surrounding countries but for Zambia that is what I noticed so the electric powered pumps were in the 200 250 dollar range whereas the solar powered pumps were in the 750 to 800 dollar range so to me that is significant I couldn't afford a solar panel um, a solar powered pump, even though that was my preference. So cost is definitely something you have to consider when you're making the decision. The initial amount that you put into a solar powered pump will be much more than what you put into an electric powered pump. So that's the first difference. In the long run, of course, a solar powered pump will cost you much less because you are using renewable energy, which is from the sun and that is free. That is always better for our environment. And um, if you are able to afford a solar powered pump, I would say you should go for it. But that is just my opinion. I think one of the biggest advantages of having a solar powered pump is the fact that you're not depending on the national grid. And in Zambia, where there are major electricity interruptions, a solar powered pump would be your best bet. And uh, based on the rain pattern right now, with uh, so much going on, there's a drought going on right now in Zambia, and um, that means there will be expected load shedding and power cuts. So if you have an opportunity to get your solar powered pump right now, I think you would be doing the best thing for yourself. So that said, I am shifting into reliability between the two types of uh, pumps. So as far as reliability goes, I would say your solar powered pump will be much more reliable because we have hundreds and hundreds of days of sunshine here in Zambia, but you just never know with the weather patterns. Uh, during the rainy season, you may have days where you have no sunshine for several hours on end. And so that will affect the reliability of your solar powered pump. So it really comes to your choice. There are interruptions in the national grid and there are some interruptions with weather patterns. 
but of course you can always figure out a way around those two i'm just giving you my opinion as to what i think is more reliable to me the solar powered pump still wins in another video i shared with you uh, how i went back to my village in kasempa zambia where my uncle has a solar powered pump and it is doing incredible for him so i wish i was able to do exactly what he's done but i'm not complaining because i really appreciate that i actually do have a pump that can water my garden and also provide a sustainable stream of water into my house these are the solar panels that are used uh, and the pump is inside so what is here yeah, it's a, it's a breaker it's a, box. Yeah, it's a breaker box. Uh -huh. so. Okay, so the, a there's, there's a, a it's a control switch. It's a control switch. Sure. So this is the tank. I'll 10, show it better. Liters. Ten thousand liters. Sprinklers yeah. and more solar panels. So this whole place is powered by. Looks like four large solar panels. It's powering the house the tank, uh, the borehole. As far as maintenance goes, you might want to do some more research or check with a professional on this. But my understanding is that there are less parts to maintain in a solar powered pump compared to an electric powered pump. So in the long run, you will probably be saving a lot more by getting a solar powered pump. If you're enjoying this video, please give this video a like and share it with somebody else. Listen, that is a good way for you to support my channel. It lets YouTube know that the information I'm providing is valuable. So go ahead and do just that. So it's a really hot day and I'm moving around trying to find shady places to record this and I happen to have lots of trees and so there's a lot of shade on my property and I'm grateful for that. So if you are in a place where there is no electricity, you are off grid, your farm is off grid, your property is off grid, of course um, the option of having an electric powered pump doesn't even exist so the solar way is the best way to go i believe there are some pumps out there that are diesel powered or just generally fuel powered that's worth looking into but i would say why go into all that when you can have access to free energy that god provides on a daily basis here in zambia on an almost daily basis that is so as you can see you can probably tell already that i am biased towards a solar powered pump and in future that is my hope to get one so the farm behind me is what prompted me to get an electric powered pump because our hard pump was just too difficult to operate to try and water our farm there's thunder and lightning coming from that direction and it looks like it's raining the rains have been so patchy it might rain you hear that it might rain in a spot like a few miles from here and it's dry over here but maybe we will get some rain as well my maize needed desperately Lord send us rain I have mentioned it many times we are in the middle of a big drought here in Zambia and hundreds of farmers thousands of farmers have lost their livelihood and so there's a lot of talk about sustainable ways to maintain these farms Zambia produces a lot of corn and other vegetables and uh, plants in general and so to be affected by a drought when we have 
an incredible amount of sunshine that can power every single farm in this country. Um, it is a shame. So we have to address these issues on an individual basis and of course on a governmental basis as well. Look at that. My corn was doing so good until recently. We've had no rain for over a month. Just a sprinkle here and there and it's not enough. We need to address this as a country. I probably got this pump way too late for my crops. Uh, but nonetheless, I will do my best to water this lovely maize and see if we can get a better harvest than expected. So what is my conclusion? If you can afford it, if you have the money for it, go for a solar powered pump. All round, it is the best option. However, if you don't have enough money like me, an electric powered pump will serve you just as well, at least for the beginning. But with all these drought issues here in Zambia and in general with the weather changes, the more renewable energy we use, the better for our planet, the better for ourselves. We will be saving a lot in the long run. So I'm hoping to get a solar powered pump when I have the money. And when I do that, I will be right here to share that with you. I'm trusting that this information has been of help to you. And if it has, please be sure to give this video a like and share it with somebody else. That will encourage me to continue bringing this type of information to you. Look at that. My plants, my flowers are thriving despite the drought. Love it. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I am very grateful that you chose to stop here. For now, let me wish you God's blessings and see you in the next one. Bye-bye from Zambia, Africa.